When Cataclysm finally arrives and we're on our push from level 80 to 85, there's normally one thing that we're thinking about. Is there anything important I should focus on between 80 and 85, which maybe will save me time at 85? And where am I going to get my pre-raid bis from? Now, that may seem like a strange opener to a video that very clearly seems like it's going to be focused towards factions, but trust me, it's actually very relevant. In Cataclysm in Phase 1, you're going to have five main reputations. Six if you include the PvP rep from Tolbarad, which we will touch on as well. Each of the new zones will have a reputation associated with it. So Mount Hyjal has got Guardians of Hyjal. Vashir and Deepholm have both got the Earthen Ring. Ramkehen is associated with Oldham. And then finally, you've got Wildhammer Clan for the Alliance in Twilight Highlands or Dragonmoor Clan for the Horde in Twilight Highlands. Deepholm does have one more that's associated with it, which is Therizane. And Therizane is going to be a very important faction for everybody because at Honored, you're going to get your blue quality shoulder enchant and at Exalted, you're going to get your epic quality shoulder enchant of course getting to exalted with any of these reputations is made quicker by questing because if you quest in the appropriate zone beyond the point of just getting friendly and being able to equip the tabard it's going to substantially cut down on the amount of heroics that you're going to have to do or even normal dungeons that you're going to have to do while wearing the tabard of course and if you're currently playing wrath of the lich king and you're exalted with sons of hodir the shoulder enchant at honored is not a massive upgrade it's still a sizable upgrade but you might be happy with your sons of hodir enchant tide you over while you work on other factions to get items over an enchant which would be understandable now each of the factions associated with these zones at friendly will give you the tabard that you'll be able to wear in dungeons which will only grant reputation in level 85 dungeons and obviously heroics at honored they unlock some blue pieces of gear which are of normal dungeon quality as in level 85 dungeon quality but the item level of these is 333 three, three. and then at revered there's items of heroic five man quality and of course, at Revered is where you get your head enchant. And then finally, at Exalted, you'll start to get 359 Epic gear, which is the same eye level as if you was to craft some Epics, get level 85 Epics from Archaeology, or even normal raids. First of all, let's talk about the head enchants, because the head enchants are obviously very good, and they're going to be something that everybody's going to want. The Spellcaster's Guardians of Hyjal is actually going to give you your Spellcaster head enchant with 60 Intellect and 35 Crit rating. Earthen Ring is for the tanks, giving 90 stats stamina and 35 dodge oldham is for the agility users so this gives 60 agility and 35 haste rating and then for the strength dps it's going to be wild hammer clan or dragon Moor clan in twilight highlands where you'll get 60 strength and 35 mastery now because there's lots of options of where you can get gear you might choose to go for exalted with therazane very early to be able to get your shoulder enchant sorted and then pick whichever revered faction you need now, if you do a lot of questing in a specific zone, we'll use Mount Hyjal as an example. By the time you finish Mount Hyjal, you'll be revered anyway without ever equipping a tabard. So for most spellcasters, I'd recommend doing all the quests in Mount Hyjal if you're going to quest your way to level 85, because even if the exalted epics are not particularly good, at least you're going to get your head enchant without having to waste time using the tabard in the first dungeons you're going to do when you ding. Because these are the exalted items from Guardians of Hyjal, and quite honestly, for spellcaster DPS, if you're a pure purebred by purebred i mean warlock or mage there is not actually anything here you want anyway but for something like a priest the cloth waste could be particularly good for exalted with hydro there's also a tanking cloak some male agility feet and a plate dps belt now when you're looking at these it's also worth paying close attention to the 346 item level gear that comes at revered because just as an example here something like an enhancement shaman would have a pretty good time with guardians of hydro being one of their first reputations because you're going to get a 346 agility neck which which of course you'd then be pairing with the boots when you get to exalted or as a plate wearing dps at revered you'll get some plate boots and then at exalted you'd get a belt as well the other items that you'll get from revered with guardians of hyjal are some boomy gloves with haste and mastery and some mal caster legs i'm not going to mention any of the honored gear because quite honestly you're not really going to want to be going into raids with 333 eye level gear all we're going to focus on is the 346 plus gear now that was just an example so before i start throwing around all of these items where you're like oh i don't know which faction to go first it's worth bearing in mind some of the alternative places that you can actually get 359 gear anyway. And the best place to start with that would be crafting. There was a cloth wearer in phase one. You're not really bothered about legs or belts. Now on the basis we looked at Hyjal and there was a nice belt that came from it, you could save time by not going from Revered to Exalted with Guardians of Hyjal and getting the crafted tailoring belt instead. Because then you can be spending your time working on a faction that is going to reward you with 359 gear at the end of it that you can't get from anywhere else. 
else. Now, all four of these tailoring epics are BOE, so you'll be able to pick them up off the auction house, or if you're going to use all your cooldowns as a tailor yourself, you'll be able to craft it on the second week. So if you've got two tailoring alts, for example, you'll be able to make both the legs and the belt the first time all your cooldowns reset, which will be seven days after the first time you use them. There is one thing I want to clarify here. If you're a main and you're a tailor, there is actually a chance that you could make one of these a week, or technically you could make one of these a day. Most people will only make five dream cloth a week, especially if it's on alts, because there is a sixth that you can make that has no cooldown. The problem is it does require these chaos orbs, so that basically means you're going to have to guarantee you can get five of these, and they only come from the end bosses in heroics, and you're not going to be the only one that needs them. Every engineer is going to need one chaos orb just to make their goggles. So yeah, you would have to kind of like hard reserve them or something if you wanted to make sure that you was maximizing the amount of cloth that you can make a week. But with each recipe requiring six dream cloth to make, even if you get five chaos orbs in the first week, you're still not going to have enough to actually buy the recipe, which costs one and have six to craft with. So to basically make one tailoring crafted item in the first week, you're going to have to use all your cooldowns and get 10 chaos orbs. I do also just want to point out that on the beta at the moment, it's showing that it's only four chaos orbs, but it should be five. And of course, the chaos orbs will be bind on pickup because it's like frozen orbs. It's not until the last patch where they actually become tradable. One small note as well is actually chaos orbs shouldn't even be seen by people who are not at least 425 tailoring blacksmithing, level working, or engineering, and that's definitely not the case on the beta at the moment. If you're a plate wearer, be it either a tank, a healer, or a DPS, you're not going to be bothered about chest or belts because you'll be able to get these from blacksmithing or the auction house. And the same applies for level wearers or mal wearers, where you're going to be able to get a chest and belt from level working. Now, I think that's important to bear in mind because, again, you're not going to want to go to the auction house and buy an epic belt or, you know, you're going to craft it yourself. And then you're working on a faction where you'll get to exult and be like, oh, I can go and buy myself an item and it's a belt. Now, outside of well drop BOEs, which we're absolutely not going to focus on because that would be far too random. There is one more source that you can get 359 epics, and that's archaeology. Pastors are going to be able to get a ring, which is called Ring of the Boy Emperor. You're also going to be able to get a trinket, which has just got 321 intellect on. And then it's more for healers, but 321 intellect, even for a caster DPS as a starter trinket, is not a bad trinket. And then you've got a pretty good selection of weapons. There's a one-handed strength weapon. There's a two-handed strength weapon. A couple of different spellcaster staff. So you've got one that's more spirit-based and one that's more caster DPS orientated. So that's no spirit. It's just got crit haste and spell power. And then finally, there's also a tanking shield as well. Now, don't get me wrong, these could take a long time to get because archaeology is kind of random, but I think the majority of us are going to go pretty hard with archaeology to begin with because there's not many classes that can't get some sort of benefit from archaeology. The only classes it sucks for a little bit is the more agility-based DPS. So now we know what epics we can already get, it will start to paint a bit of a picture when we look through these reputations. So if we start with Irvin Ring, because this is going to be one of the first zones you do if you start in Vashir, or you're going to actually get some reputation from Deep Home anyway, these are what you're going to be able to get revered. So you're going to have a caster cloak, an agility DPS cloak, some leather caster legs, and a plate healing chest. So straight away, we can look at them and be like, well, we're not really that bothered about the chest because we know we're going to get a blacksmithing chest as a holy paladin. So we'd instantly be looking forward to Exalted to see what comes from there, which cast the DPS are going to get a nice set of hands, which we know there's no hands that come from crafting or archaeology. There's a pair of Mal caster boots, plate healing hands and an agility DPS ring. So actually, all of the exalted rewards are really useful here. So if there is one item that you can benefit from at Revered and you can also benefit from one from Exalted, it's probably worth doing. So being able to get an early 346 DPS cloak as, let's say, a Feral Druid or a Rogue, and then knowing you're also going to get a ring when you get to Exalted, that would be good. As a caster DPS, being able to get a nice cloak at Revered and then get some gloves when you're Exalted, that would be good as well. So I think all round Earthen Ring for many classes will actually be quite a good one to get exalted with early. Next up would be Ramkehen. With Ramkehen at Revered, you're going to be able to get a cloth DPS chest with crit and hit, a leather agility DPS belt, a Mal caster belt, which straight away we know we're not interested in either of those because we can get better from leather working, and then a strength DPS ring. And moving on to exalted, we've got some cloth DPS boots, plate tanking wrists, plate healing belts, a strength DPS neck, and then you also get a mount. 
So if you're not going for the mount, what you need to bear in mind here is the waste it exalted for if you're a holy paladin is probably not worth going for because you're going to get the light elementium belt, which actually makes Ramkehen a very, very low prio rep for a holy paladin, as an example. Whereas for a cloth wearer, being able to get a nice crit and hit chest when you're going to need hit nice and early on anyway and being able to get a pair of hit boots could be worth considering. And finally, Dragon Maw Clan and Wild Hammer Clan, whilst the items have different names, they have exactly the same stats. There's definitely something worth noting with this rep, because if you're a male agility user or a plate DPS or a plate tank, you're definitely going to want Revere with these quite early because you're going to get your first 3, 4, 6 item level head where you're actually going to have something with a meta socket if you're not going engineering and you're going to be using the goggles. Now, engineering is one that I didn't mention purely because it kind of applies to everyone and there's not many factions where head is even a concern. There's also a pair of plate DPS hands and also a caster ring with hit and mastery. When it comes to the epics, we've got some leather agility gloves with crit and haste on, a leather caster belt with spirit haste, some tanking boots and finally a caster neck unlike wrath of the lich king where jewel crafting can make epic necks and rings they can only actually make blue necks and rings which means as a caster it's a pretty safe bet to be going for this reputation early on to get the neck as a balanced druid or a resto druid you're going to be able to get the crafted belt so you're not too bothered about the belt from this and to be fair even the ring itself is not that great either so this could definitely be quite low prio for a druid but if you wanted to save yourself some gold this is actually an incredibly efficient way to get three items because if you was to use the ring so it's a three four six ring which will be good enough which you'll get a revered you save some gold by not buying or making the leather working belt and you get the neck as well that's actually going to be three items just from revered and exalted and while i don't want to focus too much on three 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 gear there is also a decent pair of shoulders which would tide you over as well so i definitely see the value in balanced druids and resto druids going for the twilight highlands rep pretty early now therazane as i've already mentioned is going to be a reputation that everyone wants to do the only thing i haven't mentioned is the fact that when you get to revered every type of role gets a ring and it's only a three four six ring so again nothing to get overly excited about the reason you're doing this reputation really is for the shoulder enchants. So for the shoulder enchants, you're going to get 50 in and 25 haste, 50 strength and 25 crit, 50 agility and 25 mastery, or 75 stamina and 25 dodge. Now, while you might value getting the epics first from the other reputations and then worrying about the shoulder enchant a little bit closer to when you're actually going to raid, obviously that's absolutely fine. As long as you get a week or two before we can actually step foot in the raid, you're going to get enough time to probably get the majority of these done anyway. It's more about just trying to be efficient in which ones you do first. There is another reputation which requires dailies or doing Tolbarad regularly, preferably both if you want to get through it nice and quick. To be perfectly honest, there's some 346 weapons from Revered which are okay. They're the same item level as Heroics, but you're probably going to be able to pick up other weapons from different means, possibly even easier means. The big deal though is that Exalted, there's a good trinket for literally every class. Now, I wouldn't do this grind specifically for the trinket on anything other than a tank, but they can be a good trinket to tide you over until you get something better. The reason it's important for tanks is because if you don't know already, mastery is going to be a very, very big stat for all tanks, and it increases your arcane, fire, frost, nature, and shadow resistances by 400 for 10 seconds on a minute cooldown. So it's an absolutely huge tanking cooldown as well. Now, ultimately, if you clicked on the video because you wanted to know which reputations to work on first, while this isn't a finished product yet and I am actively working on it, I will show you it and I'll also put a link in the description below. I've been compiling the best way that I see to gear up as every class in Cataclysm. Now, don't get me wrong, some of this might take a while because archaeology isn't going to be a quick grind, but ultimately some of the items that are sat behind archaeology are going to be better than you can get anywhere else so when you look at the key here anything in green means you can already get a very good item from a profession this is assuming engineering and alchemy on everything and the only reason for that is so you get the alchemy trinket early on and then once you get something to replace it you can drop alchemy and pick up tailoring for the cloak proc but i have put an optional trinket or even optional trinkets in some places so if you're not alchemy don't worry there are other options i've still got a few armor types to do here but i'm hoping to have it finished off in the next couple of days but if we was to look at the cloth dps for an example we can 
see the order of the reps that are going to be the best way to go because it's the ones that are going to give the most gear and also in the revered and exalted columns it shows you which item is relevant to you that comes from that reputation so ultimately you can then make your own mind up i put in a step by step on the order that i would do the reps in if i was playing that class but by all means just look at what each one gives and then make your own mind up the thing worth noting is while you're working on these reputations it's highly likely you're going to be doing heroic dungeons so if at some point you actually pick an item up that's going to tide you over where you now don't need to rush to exalt it on a specific rep, just move on to the next one. Like I say, I'm not going to read through this and this will evolve over time. And if you've got any input on it, feel free to jump on my Discord and let me know if there's any items that you can think about that I've potentially left off the list. But that's it. That's the reputations in Cataclysm. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to smash that subscribe button, like the video, consider joining the channel as a member, get rested XP, all of that good stuff that helps support the channel and keep me here, hopefully putting out content that you enjoy consuming, which you've got all the way to the end. You probably do, hopefully. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one.